Hi Taurus, this is your August 26th through September 1st weekly tarot reading will have five separate spreads in this weekly reading. In the first spread we'll be looking at new love entry in your life. In the second spread we'll check in with those of you who are already involved with somebody. Spread number three will be love from the past. In the fourth spread we'll talk about your work, your business and your finances and uh, we'll wrap things up with the fifth spread which will be what you're not expecting to happen this week. Please like, comment and subscribe to support this channel. This first spread is a new love this week, uh, Taurus. We have the Emperor, clarified by the Ace of Wands. We have the Ace of Swords, clarified by the Fool. We have the Eight of Wands in the potential outcome. Uh, we have the Ten of Pentacles with the Star in the World. And we also have the Ace of Cups on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Aries or an Aquarius or any Zodiac sign. Well, Taurus, I hope you're ready for this. The very first card that came out is the Emperor. And uh, the Emperor is coming your way. <laughs> the, ready or not, the Emperor is coming your way. And this person is not joking. This person is not fooling you around, even though we do have the Fool card. But uh, uh, nope, this person is not joking. They're as serious as it gets. Um, I count three aces on the table. Three. Three aces. And uh, the Emperor is clarified by one of them, and uh, the Emperor is followed up by another Ace. And uh, we have the third Ace on the bottom of the deck. Alright, so the em both the Emperor and the Fool, by the way, could be Aries cards. Right, uh, Taurus? But uh, uh, the Emperor is somebody who is large and in charge. The Emperor, somebody who is uh, like very well established. The Emperor does not joke around. The Emperor always keeps their promises. The Emperor often comes through as a future spouse or future husband figure. Right, so this person is coming in and their, their intention is to get serious with you. And they're going to tell you. Not only will they tell you, they will do things <laughs> to make sure you understand just how serious they are about you. Hence all the aces. Hence three aces. Hence the three aces. The ace of swords, by the way, could belong to you, Taurus. Right? You could say yes. The ace of swords often comes through as the word yes. Perhaps you're going to be impressed to the point that you'll be like, yeah, of course I want to move forward with you. Perhaps this is somebody who, whom you already know, and you know what this person is all about, right? Um, or, if you meet this person this week, you will know that this person means business, all right? So the Ace of Swords could be like a very straightforward, very direct conversation. It's a card of clarity. Uh, the Ace of Swords is definitely a card of a new beginning, just like the other two Aces. And the Ace of Swords is one of the yes words in the tarot deck, right? The Fool clarifying it, another Aries card. The Fool is a card of just going right in, going right in, jumping right in. Jumping head first, taking a leap of faith, taking a risk. But I think in this case, it's not you taking a risk. I think this is you just going for it, right? Because uh, you know maybe this is somebody or someone like this you always wanted. We do have a wish come true card in the potential outcome. We'll get to it in just a second, right? The eight of ones in the middle is a card of the Cupid's arrows. Right? The Cupid's arrow. So the Cupid is definitely guilty, <laughs> if you ask me. The Cupid has something to do with it, perhaps, right? The Eight of Wands is also one of the fastest cards in the deck. For some of you, uh, you guys could be traveling together at some point, either this week or in the upcoming weeks, right? And uh, yeah, it's a card of a lot of communication. And things may simply gain momentum, right? Things will simply, you know, uh, move forward like a, like a freight train. Like, uh, it will take off like a rocket. I think I'm out of comparison at this point. <laughs> yeah, so there is no hesitation here. Nobody's gonna think, stop and think twice, Taurus. Quite the opposite. It's all systems go. See, see, I just came up with another comparison. Anyway, in the potential outcome we have the Ten of Pentacles with the star and the world. The star could be an Aquarius idiom, but the star is the card of a wish come true. And uh, this is something people usually wish for and hope for for a very long time. The Ten of Pentacles uh, is a card of uh, financial abundance. It's also a card of a rock-solid commitment of marriage. It's a card of real estate. Rock-solid card, right? Uh, the world right next to the deck. Another travel card, by the way, right? The world could be someplace remote. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys move or go travel the world, go see the world. <laughs> 
but that the world is also a card of an ending. And I always interpret it as a happy end card. This is when one chapter of your life comes to an end and a much better, much happier chapter of your life together with the Emperor is going to begin. Taurus. So I hope you're ready for this. This looks good. I, I think you're going to be happy when this takes place, when this happens, when the Emperor makes a move. I think you're going to be like, yes. <laughs> Before they finish their sentence, they, you will already say yes. Not because you're desperate, but because you know. You know that this person is, is like a provider. They, they will always be there for you. You can always rely on this person and all that good stuff. And there's definitely love with the Ace of Cups and the Eight of Wands. Really happy for you, Taurus. Congratulations. If you are already in a relationship or married, uh, Taurus, uh, the spread is for you. We have the Star, Temperance, the Ten of Pentacles, and uh, the Six of Swords. On the bottom of the deck, you could be dealing with an Aquarius or a Sagittarius or any zodiac sign. Do you know what it feels like? It feels like it's calm after the storm. Right? Um, yeah. Are you going to maybe some kind of a healing retreat by any chance? Because uh, both the star and temperance could be healing cards. They could be interpreted as healing, right? <laughs> At the same time, the star could also be a card of a wish come true, okay? The temperance card could be a card of balance. It could be a card of um, peace, you know, patience, that type of energy. The six of swords on the bottom of the deck could be a card of literally going somewhere or moving. Maybe you're moving this week from one place to another. Uh, but uh, the Six of Swords could be, you know, a trip, a nice trip, because the thing about the Six of Swords, things usually get better. Or if we go on trips, if we go somewhere, we enjoy it. <laughs> we usually like it. All right, and uh, the Ten of Pentacles right next to the deck could be a card of real estate or a card of family. It's also a card of uh, financial abundance. All right, perhaps some of you are getting a settlement payment for something that happened in the past. I'm not predicting anything happening this week, but this week it's like, like I said in the beginning, calm after the storm, right? Um, yeah, but other than that, it looks good. It, it's, there is movement with that Six of Swords, but it's not anything sudden. It's not anything unexpected, right? So, yeah, this looks, this looks very peaceful, all right? Cool. Let's see if anybody comes back from the past for you, uh, Taurus, this week. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to be the most recent X. We have the World, the Four of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, clarified by the Hierophant, and uh, we also have the Nine of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. It feels like you're definitely not open for business when it comes to people coming back from the past. Right? And um, if we look at all those cards, every single card features just one person in them. Just one. The World, the f they're all featuring just one person. Except for maybe the Hierophant, I guess, <laughs> right? We are looking at, uh, yeah, there, th we have three people in the Hierophant card. But the Hierophant is your major Arcana card, Taurus, so that's you. <laughs> and um, no, I don't know who's coming back. I clarified the 901s just in case. Uh, and your major Arcana card showed up. But uh, other than that, I don't see you going back to anybody. It's like you're, you're not taking anybody back from the past this week. Right? Uh, it doesn't mean that you're not going to hear from anybody, perhaps you will, but uh, you will remain closed off. Closed off. You'd rather be by yourself than to get back together with this person. All right? Cool. Let's talk about your work, your business, and your finances, uh, Taurus. This week we have um, Page, Knight, and the Ace of Pentacles, <laughs> and uh, the Fool on the bottom of the deck. Um, I love it. I, I love it. I don't think I've ever seen a spread like this. It made no sense for me to clarify anything, right? Because you're going from page to knight, from knight to ace. You either have multiple offers on the table this week, or somebody really, really wants you on board, then they will just keep throwing stuff at you until they finally got you interested <laughs> or something like that. All right, yeah, we're going from page to knight to ace. And uh, the Fool on the bottom of the deck um, could be an Aries you're dealing with, but uh, the Fool is a card of taking a risk, taking a leap of faith, perhaps trying something you haven't tried before, or maybe working for a company in the industry that you've never worked in before, something like that. It could be like a startup company, or perhaps the company wants to like venture out and uh, do 
different type of business and they see you as somebody who can help them with that because they don't have any experience in that area but perhaps you do you know something like that uh, somebody really wants you on board right really and um, they will give you more money tours don't tell anybody but they will give you more money if you stay professional if you play hard to get tours I think they will keep trying and they will keep uh, giving you what you're asking for or something like that this is definitely you see how we're yeah it's it's an increase from page to knight to ace <laughs> right and uh, the knight to pentacles is the most financially abundant knight out of all four knights uh, for some of you like i said you may have multiple offers coming your way but uh yeah it's it's a good week to be a taurus <laughs> all right cool Let's see what you're not expecting to happen uh, this week, Taurus. We have the four of ones, the ten of cups, the two of cups, and uh, the three of ones on the bottom of the deck. What you're not expecting is somebody here is deciding to get married, Taurus. <laughs> I don't know if it's you or someone you know, but uh, there's definitely somebody deciding to uh, take it to the next level, right? So, because we have that three of ones on the bottom of the deck. And uh, the first card that actually came out is the Four of Wands, and it's followed up by the Ten of Cups, right? The Three of Wands is a card of somebody who knows what they want, somebody who made up their mind. And the Four of Wands is the next step up. It is a card of a commitment in marriage, and so is the Ten of Cups. So technically, half of the cards we have on the table are marriage cards. And the Two of Cups right next to the deck is a soulmate card, and as you can see, we have two people in the Two of Cups. Let me know in the comments down below who's getting married. Or, just, uh, or at least deciding to get married. Maybe they're planning a wedding for uh, a little bit later in the year, but uh, this decision is final. The three of ones is a card of somebody who made a final decision. All right, Taurus, so yeah, that's what I have for you for this reading, for this week. If this video resonates with you, please like it. Please also comment and subscribe. And uh, other than that, Taurus, have an amazing week.